<clears throat> okay, hi. Uh, my name is Andrew. I am a senior IMPD tech and CS double major. And thank you, Cam, for introducing project management. And this talk is going to be about the producer who is the one responsible for handling the project management. We're going to talk about <clears throat> the roles of the producer and some of the tools that a producer uses, or rather that I use during my experiences as a producer. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of my experience. I was in Master G SIP 2022, and we made the game Get Low Grandpa. <clears throat> and I was, this is the first official experience I had as a producer. And it got me interested into this, this field. And so I was, I had the opportunity to work in Activision or specifically Infinity Ward last summer as a production intern. And I worked on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 for post launch content for season four Reloaded and season six, which is the haunting event. And then also some of the single player levels on the campaign for Modern Warfare 3. And this one was my first AAA experience working as a producer. And it was very different from what I experienced in Mass Digi, which was more indie-ish. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about what does what are, what are some of the responsibilities of the producer. And these are the four that I experienced personally during my experiences. And it's consists of managing the backlog, tracking tasks, protecting the team, and communication. So let's talk about the backlog. Backlog is the is essentially a list of tasks that you identify before you start your project. And this allows you to scope your project relatively well uh, at the start. So essentially the backlog consists of those tasks that end up being your game. Yeah. Now, always you will not know all the tasks that you need to make. Sometimes they are uncertain, they are ambiguous tasks. So if, for example, Alpha Fest, um, you get feedback from playtesters. The feedback that comes in ends up being ambiguous tasks, tasks that you did not expect to have in the initial backlog creation. And so it's you as a producer, so your, your responsibility is to pri reprioritize, reorganize your backlog such that you incorporate the feedback that you get, more user requirements that you get into creating a backlog that, that handles that, those ambiguous tasks. So this is an example of a backlog I have for uh, my MQP. And let's just say a lot of the refactoring tasks that you see up here, those are not there before. And th those were the result of our numerous code reviews that we do as a team. So embrace the uncertainty. Don't think that you can know exactly what tasks you need to make this game. You will not. You will have to add on to it to, in the end, okay? And once you have this backlog, what, rather, how do you plan it out? Um, we have stuff called production processes, and this includes Kanban, which uses the Kanban board we saw before. We, other people use Agile Scrum. Other people use Waterfall. There's also Organic, which is just a to-do list. And there are 10 or more so other processes that you can use. And I'm not going to go through each one because it's going to take a long time. But how do you pick which production process? to plan out your backlog, plan out the tasks to assign your team. It really depends on the situation. Each production process has its weaknesses, has its benefits. Some are more suited for different types of work. For example, waterfall is really good for tasks that have dependencies, They're very good for tasks that you can easily measure the amount of effort you need to create. And so art assets, are really good uh, with this production process. On the contrary, Agile Scrum is used for work that requires a lot of iteration, building upon changing user requirements 
And this is what normally the tech giants use in their, um, in their work. So very good for technical, very good for coding. Kanban is good for design just because it also has the iteration and uh, as Agile Scrum, but it also gives a lot of autonomy to your team and designers like that. But most importantly, the best process is the one that the team finds comf most comfortable using. Because in the end, they're the ones using the process. They're the ones giving you the information of, hey, I'm doing this right now. Hey, this thing's gonna get delayed. And you want to give them this a process that is easy for them, that they're comfortable using, so that it's easy for you to talk to your team. It's easy for you to get information from your team. And it just benefits you and your team overall. All right, so we established the production process. We plan out our backlog or what we know of the backlog right now. Now we're in development. And the most important thing you're gonna be doing is task tracking. And what you're tracking are high priority tasks. And high, by high priority tasks, they, they are like those tasks that make up your main game mechanics or those high priority bugs that just break your game. So you want to be on top of these tasks. You want to make sure you communicate the status updates to relevant stakeholders. And I can give you an example for this. Uh, let's say you are the producer for the design team and QA comes up to you one day and says, hey, in level two of our FPS game, you do this action, this action, this action, and the player ends up in an infinite, infinite event loop. That's a high priority task that blocks the player progression. And that's something that we want to avoid, and that becomes a high priority. So once you get this information, what do you do? First, if it's not logged in into like the what so whatever software you use to tell the whole studio that this thing is a bug that is already logged, then log it in. Let everybody know, be transparent that, hey, there's this thing. You don't need to log anything else, okay? After that, you want to check your designer's um, workload. What are they doing right now? If they are doing something as important or more important, then leave that designer being, let that designer finish. Check other designers and say designer two is doing something less important, but he's almost done with it. So you can go up to designer two and say, hey, when you're done with this, please do this um, high priority bug because this thing is blocking us. So you just want to stay on top of this, being able to be proactive in finding those tasks, in documenting those tasks, and communicating when you know, when when those tasks happen and communicating the status updates for that task uh, to the relevant stakeholders. If you do that, you're flying. You're very successful as a producer. Second thing you want to track is the amount of effort each task requires. Uh, by effort, each, produ each production process has its own style of tracking effort. Um, it could be based on time it takes to create or to finish the task. It could be based on difficulty of the task. Um, so, but as long as you track this effort, this allows you to find out on average, how much work does your team do given a time period? Why is this important? It lets you protect your team from crunch. So to illustrate this, I'll give you an example. I have a Gantt chart here, a project schedule for, let's just say an artist. On the left, or on the right, uh, is the project deliverables. So these are your art assets. Then we have the timeline from January to July. We have a seven month uh, period to finish all these deliverables. And each bar is the time it takes and this represents the effort of the artist to create this deliverable. Ooh, let's say we're in March. 
we're nearing the end of March and your boss comes up to you and says, <clears throat> for our game, I think we would benefit and we would make our game better if we add in a dinosaur. Let's add a T-Rex. And let's say the T-Rex takes two months to make. And so what you can do, because you have been tracking the amount of work your artist does, and you can estimate, this is a projection, by the way, you can estimate um, the amount of time each asset will take for this artist. You can go to your boss and say, and be very confident about it too. You can say, hey boss, this is the timeline we have right now. We have predicted that this, all of these assets will be done by blah, blah, blah. blah. So I give you two options. Number one, we can't make that T-Rex um, because we're fully booked. Or number two, it's March right now. Maybe we can take out either three, four, four, five, or five, six. We can swap it out for that T-Rex it takes two months to create. So by using that projected um, estimated work workload for your team, you can tell your superiors that, hey, we don't have time. This is how we scope things, right? Um, sorry, boss, we don't have time to do this. We cannot do this. And in my, in Infinity Ward, oh, this thing happens on a regular basis in like meetings where we want to improve our gameplay. We want to make stuff look nicer. A lot of the producers have this on hand, like handy on, like they have it on hand and Right when someone says, hey, can we add this? They're like, no, we're not doing that. We, we don't have time to do this. So as long as you're prepared, you have this on hand, ready to go, your team will love you. They're going to love you for protecting them from having to do crutch. All right, so last but not least, I want to touch upon communication. Communication as a producer, especially for AAA, where you're dealing with your team and 12 other different departments, uh, communication becomes very, very complicated and something that you want to really nail down or else you're going to have a lot of problems. Essentially, the ideal scenario is you as a producer want to become the central hub of information regarding your team and your team's work. Nothing gets past you. Um, yeah, nothing gets past you if it is about your team, okay? Because what happens when your external stakeholders could be your superiors, could be um, other teams, other departments, what happens if they bypass you and go straight to your team with extra requirements or bugs? You are not aware of those extra requirements, those bugs, and you won't be able to organize it. You won't be able to prioritize it. You cannot track it. That leads to crunch. That leads to your plan being thrown out the window and your team will be disorganized as well because you already planned everything out for them. They're gonna experience that like crunch feeling. Um, then you are just going to be left in the dark. You don't know what's happening. You don't know what went wrong. And that's, that's, not, that's not what we want. <clears throat> so making sure that you are in the loop of everything regarding your team is really, really important. And it works both ways where your team communicates through you to other, the, the other teams. Because let's say your team is encountering a bug or it's, oh, actually, no. Let's say your team is waiting on an asset from a different team. Okay, let's say, yeah, let's say you're VFX, you're producing VFX and you're waiting on animation for a specific person, you know, sort of for a specific asset. Uh, your team doesn't care about who's doing that animation because it's your job to communicate to the other producer on the animation team or directly to, um, actually no, if both, both the producer and the person working on that animation, making sure that, so you know who to talk to if there's a problem. Your team doesn't. So they expect you to help them so that they can focus on their work. You focus on that other thing on communication. That's your job. Uh, 
So very important that you keep track of these tasks, make sure you're in the loop. Information is your biggest asset um, and your biggest strength in the games industry. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about some of the tools I used during my internship, uh, which are which is Jira and to-do list. So I'm gonna hop on over to Jira. Oh, Jira. So Jira is a project management software. Um, you can do Agile Scrum in this, you can do Kanban in this right now for my MQP, this is my MQP. We are using modified Scrum, uh, where again, we had this backlog before the backlog was filled, but I've been doing some reprioritization organization, putting them to their own respective sprints. Uh, so now our backlog is set for C term. This is our C term backlog. This is the last sprint till the end of the term. And uh, let's see. So let's just say this week five to six was a short week. We don't have that many. Um, we don't have that many tasks to do for that sprint. But what's nice about Jira is backlog doesn't look good. It doesn't look nice to. It's not nice to look at. So you can go over to the board where it generates your own Kanban board. Um, and yeah, lets you move things around. Right now, um, I have this, this task on me uh, for bug fixing jumping. And I'm not going to complete that by tonight, which is the end of the sprint. So what I do here is to reprioritize it. We're going to go back to the backlog. We're just going to move that thing to here. We're going to move that thing to the top of my to-do list on the next sprint. That's, so that's just showing how to reprioritize if you can't get something finished. So we're done with, let's just say we're done with this sprint and then I want to start the next sprint. The full duration from the 2nd to the 15th, which is the last day. I'm just going to start that. Cool. And now everything is on the to-do side. I have this on in progress still. And yeah, and then after tonight, the team is going to start moving their their to dos into in progress, um, and it will update accordingly in the whole database of issues. Okay. So, but what's nice about Jira is the board sometimes can get cluttered with a lot of stuff. The backlog also can be cluttered with a lot of stuff. That, uh, there is something called a dashboard in Jira that lets you aggregate all of this information into one page and lets you see the tasks that are assigned to you. Uh, you can see the issues in progress and you can do sorting and everything here. And all of this is customizable. You can edit it, you can add stuff to it. Um, we'll do that later. So yeah, so we have tasks that are assigned to me. It will change according to the user. And yeah, issues of progress, this thing will tell you what issues are being uh, worked on right now. You can also <clears throat> sort by assignee, sort by priority, you can um, do it based on labels. And let's say, let's, let's do just programming, apply filters, and it will update accordingly in these outside tasks. Uh, we can also have statistics where this one is for the number of issues you have. I can show a graph on it as well. And let's add a gadget that shows me the user story points or my estimate for the amount of effort to make each uh, to complete some tasks. Uh, let's see. Rich filter statistics. This one. Awesome. And in this statistic, let's say this is my filter that I'm using. And we are going to break it down by assignee. Uh, let's see. And then we want to see story point estimates. I'm going to say that. And it should, yeah, it should give us a breakdown of the user story points. Let's see. And this gives us a good, um, gives us like a good, um, visual on the distribution of work for this entire sprint. Uh, and let's see. 
yeah, that's for dashboards. Um, any any questions? Boy, actually, oh, I need to show the to do list. Okay, so we have we we producers have a separate to do list. We don't use Jira for tracking our own tasks because Jira is meant to become the tracker for the the development your produ your production tasks like following up on action items. Uh, talking with so, such and such for some issue or requirement, those things go into your today's or to into your to do list. And every week, I would update this. Um, <clears throat> on Sunday, I will update this with this week's to dos, and then every time, every day, I would update today's to do with whatever's next on this week's to do. And done with both of these we can just delete these cool and what's nice about google docs for your to-do list is you can you can reorder it really really easily um and you can prioritize stuff really nicely so uh, i would recommend if you are planning to go into the production route please keep a to-do list um it will help you stay on track uh for those high priority tasks It'll help you be organized. Yeah, it'll make your life so much easier. And yeah, that is all. If you want to learn more or if you want to connect, um, feel free to email me, Discord me. I should have linked my LinkedIn actually. But yeah, any questions? Um, how do you display that you have producers and you have skills? Ah, true. Okay. So, that's the hard part. You can't. <laughs> no, that's the, you can't actually. That's what I asked my manager during in, in my internship in Infinity Ward because that was a big, big thing for me. Um, how how do I display my work as a producer? And they just said that you can't. It's really it's really hard to because you don't really make anything. You don't make anything. Sure, of course. Yeah. I know they're not the most eye-catching, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Jira that's cool. I make 500 issues a day and stuff like that. But no, uh, you... Your... The way you display your success as a producer is by um, showing that my team can uh, finish on time. My team is happy about working on this, they're not stressed out, they're not crunched. And future employers will know that by reading news and other stuff like that. And that's something you highlight during like interviews, the first, the first, you know, yeah, the first interview, the, the eye catcher. Um, those are the things you want to highlight later on if you do get to that point. In your portfolio, you just want to here, let me show you my portfolio, actually. In your portfolio, you want to be very reflective, your contributions, what I learned, and all of those stuff. This thing is the thing that's going to highlight. Can you show that, hey, I, I, these are the skills I learned as a producer. Um, as a producer, you want to be able to track. You need to be able to follow up. For entry level, you need to be good at meetings, how to pre prepare meetings, hold meetings, um, taking notes for meetings. Those are very important. Uh, communication is also really good. So highlighting all those, the, the things I talked about in the presentation, showing that, writing that down in your portfolio is really good. As a producer, you want a portfolio. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. How might your how does your how might you, how does your experience differ in an environment like Massachusetts mm -hmm. smaller team to compared to bigger teams that are doing that? Um, in smaller teams or like in the a one team kind of game, um, you get a lot of creative freedom to do whatever you want. Like you get to control the narrative, you get to control your mechanics. But in AAA, the directors are the ones doing that for you. And you really don't have as much of a say in it unless you're also a super high position. Um, but 
it, but still in AAA, they give you like this broad general narrative that you need to follow. But like if you're a designer, if you're an artist, you can add your own flair to it. You can do whatever. You can still be creative, even though the the narrative is being controlled by the directors. Uh, I guess that's the biggest thing. Oh, no. The biggest thing is also communication. In indie, you only, what, audio programmers, uh, uh, artists, right? In, in, in AAA, you've got designers, you've got VFX, lighting, you've got... In art, there's what? There's concepting, there is modeling, rigging, animating. And all of that. You have so many different departments that you have to know as a producer. You have, you have to know which department to contact, actually, because there was actually this one incident in. Actually, no, I cannot say that. It's India. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but essentially, what happened was I had to find the right department to try to do this issue, to tackle this issue. And I ended up jumping to five different departments trying to find the right one. It took two days to do it. So um, having the knowledge about which department does what, what are they responsible for, their tasks, lets you become an effective producer and communicate. So yeah, there's AAA is just really can be very stressful because of that. But yeah, on the good side though. AAA is very, could be more organized than indie. Indie, you can easily get out of scope. Um, yeah, I, th I think the, yeah, the creative freedom and the communication is just two of the biggest things. Yes. How did you get, like, I know it's not super specific, but how did you get yourself to be seen by AAA as a yeah, we were, that's actually one of the things. Just wait for that. Then. Teaser right there. That's yeah. Good, yeah. What are we talking? Wait, should I answer that then? Or? Um, yeah, I guess. The answer should be come back at 6 Yeah, yeah <laughs> come back. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's all. Any, any, any other questions? Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's like your biggest like, role model or like people do dribble. What's like the one thing that? Oh, the biggest thing that stopped me from being super or the best I could do during that internship was the. Why am I blanking out on the term? What's it called? The syndrome? That's. Posture. Yes, posture. Posture. That thing. Damn. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's that's it's always the I know it's the Danny Kruger effect, but I don't I for, keep forgetting the imposter syndrome term. But yeah, the Danny Kruger effect where you think you know everything because you got this internship this, at the start and then you find out that no, you know nothing. And that's the biggest thing that stopped me from being affected from the very start is just being overloaded with information. I had to scour through all of the documentation for um, the, the company and all of the games that we were working on. Um, that overload information just got me very uh, not confident. And just being aware that, hey, stuff like that happens and you just need to, number one, ask questions when you don't know. And number two, just know that you're still an intern. You're not. You're not supposed to know all of this stuff already. That thing really helps in overcoming possible syndrome. Yeah. So I think that's the so. Any more questions? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.